going on everyone and welcome back to the film room it has been a while i haven't done one of these since right before the draft so since april um obviously not a lot to look at uh when the baltimore ravens aren't playing football and the draft has already happened but we're back um we finally have some film to look at some things to look at uh, we're gonna be doing the stadium practice i know it's uh obviously comes with some limitations it's wasn't even full pads and that kind of obviously makes trench play um, a little bit different, we'll call it. Um, but, you know, there's still some things to look at, some some really positive things, actually. And I want to look at Tyler Linderbaum specifically um, and kind of see how he did in his debut. Um, I still felt that the interior lines were still going at it pretty good. And uh, I think there's quite a few things that we can look at here and have some takeaways. So, um, before I jump into it, I think there's also been a lot of really positive feedback coming out of training camp. Um, one of the big things is not a lot has been said about Tyler Linderbaum in terms of on the field play. I say that's good because I don't want to hear miss, miss snaps, bad snaps. I don't want to hear anything to do with any sort of nagging injuries. Um, no news is good news when it comes to uh, rookie offensive line, in, in my honest opinion. Um, as long as he's in there, he's in shape. Um, but then it's kind of gone above and beyond. And so Tyler said himself, he said, it's a day by day thing. Every practice or something I can improve on to make this offensive line better. Just continue to be more commanding, slide into a leadership role because I have to be the communicator out there. And I like how he said the communicator. He's a center. He's played center his whole life. Um, he, he knows how this is going to go. So just hearing that and, um, you know, it's being kind of supported by his coaches. Uh, Coach Joe DeLisandro said, you correct him, he applies it and fixes the problem. He's doing a real nice job. His leadership role is growing. So the types of things you heard about Creed Humphrey last year, um, Creed Humphrey kind of set that rookie bar in terms of the impact you can have as a rookie um, for a center. And though that bar is high, that's what Tyler's chasing. Um, you know, he wants to be that Pro Bowl type guy right out the, right out the gate and taking over taking over line calls, taking over, you know, the communication thing. He's going to have Kevin Zeitler there to help him along, but the faster he can kind of take that over, um, you know, the better. And then Harbaugh spoke, I think this was today. Um, he said, I think he's handling it well. He doesn't make very many mistakes. That's a big challenge, which is very true, rookie mistakes. Um, he said, that's going to be the rookie challenge all year as far as mental part of it. And then he's talking about when the pads come on, he wants to make sure he can hold his own in there because those big defensive tackles are going to test him. We'll see how he does. And so that must have been a few days ago because the pads just came on. But, uh, you know, again, I think we, we're going to see tonight how he was tested and how he actually performed quite well. So what I did is I pulled seven clips. Um, so this will be a pretty short film room, but I'm not going to drag on about a stadium practice. And I pick clips where I can kind of show something different in each one. And so what I'll do is I'm going to pop the film up like I always do. Um, if you guys have questions, I'll make sure after each play, I go back and check the chat, drop questions um, about anything you have about a specific play, and I'll try and address it before we move on to the next clip. At the end, we'll wrap it up. Um, if there's any out outstanding questions or general questions, I'll start it and answer those at the end. So if you guys have play-specific questions, put them on there, and I'll, I'll try and hit on all of them before moving on to the next play. Um, and then, obviously, before we get in there, there's 13 of you in there in here right now. Do me a favor hit the like button. Uh, the support means a lot to me. And uh, let's get into it and have some fun. All right. So let me just make this bigger on my screen. Okay, this is a tough one because the broadcast camera kind of pans out as the play starts. Um, so what they're going to be working here, um, look to me anyway, again, I can't see the full play, but it looks like they're working at either a duo or a wham concept. Um, but he's basically going to work a double team uh, with, uh, I think it's with Phillips. And then what I really want you guys to focus on is his left hand and how he holds it on Aaron Crawford's back. So here, let me roll it and then I'll kind of slow it as I go. See, so they don't pan till right here. So right in the middle, he's working a double with must be whoever's at right guard. Um, but watch how Crawford gets turned. See how 97's facing out towards the camera here. So he's trying to eat this B cap to Linderbaum's right. And all Linderbaum does is take his inside hand. So his left hand, and see how he has it right on the number nine in between the nine and the seven. And so he's just going to hold that there. So this is a really savvy play because Crawford has already turned himself. Um, it wasn't really any ceiling that Linderbaum had to do. And as he overtook the block out of a double team, that's why I'm saying I think Crawford was trying to split the B gap or sorry, the A gap, not the B gap, split the A gap and try and get inside of him. 
but the run's going to Linderbaum's left away from where Crawford's splitting. So all he does is hold up right like that. See, holds that his hand on that number nine. He sits down basically in a squat. There's no way Crawford's really going to go over him. Um, and he just creates a nice little gap there. Um, so again, the big thing I think we're going to talk about tonight, the major theme is his hand usage. And that was just a really savvy play to recognize as he's working the double team that, okay, Crawford's committed. He's turned. I know where the ball's going and it's not going to this gap that he's committed to. I'm just going to hold him. So savvy play for a rookie. Um, you'll see these a lot from a guy like him in double teams because at Iowa, they ran so much zone that he's working double teams almost every play. Um, so this is his kind of bread and butter in the run game. Uh, so I thought this was really impressive. And then, uh, yeah, Mike Davis, or that's Tyler Beatty. No, it's Mike Davis. Um, on this next play, they're going to work inside zone to the right, and he's going to work a nice little double team here with, I think, Phil. Yeah. Okay, so Phillips is going to come in as the uh, as the inside double, and then Linderbaum is going to kind of pass off. I think it's Pierce. And this right here, 57, is Christian Welch. And so what I want to show is how he sets the double team. Phillips takes over uh, the, the point of attack in Pierce as the nose tackle. And then I want everyone to watch Linderbaum's right hand because it explodes out into Christian Welch as he's going to basically peel off and hit the level two block. So I'll run it and then I'll go back and go slow. So just watch right there. He gets jacked. So that is just, again, this is his, I went back way too far. This is his bread and butter in the run game. So see, they're working the double team. Phillips is overtaking Pierce. Linderbaum's going to start to peel, peel, peel off. Uh, the hole's right here, so Welch is kind of Linderbaum's man. And then right here, you can kind of see his right hand come out, and he just loads up and throws him. And so it looks like he's just throwing a right hook. So this this is the kind of thing that when we talked about in the pre-draft process, what could happen with uh, with Tyler Linderbaum and you know how could he impact their play calling um, we talked about, you know, the Ravens would have the ability to run more zone, more inside zone, more outside zone, more split zone. Um, this is the type of skill set that he brings. Um, that, that elite ability to kind of, as elite as a prospect, I'll say, elite ability to get out in space and make those level two blocks. And that's what he's showing right here. Like, just to get into the linebacker like that and throw Welch, um, that's big boy stuff. And again, it looks a little less physical there at the end, but again, they're they're kind of in shoulder pads and whatnot. So it's not going to be um, a drive block situation. So those are the two run blocks I pulled uh, from Linderbaum. Again, good, good looking hand usage, really smart football player. The high football IQ is quite high. Um, I think that really speaks to just how pro ready he was. And it's already kind of showing in August. And that's exciting for what's going to come and the stability he can bring to this offensive line. So we're going to work on um, some pass plays here. I think I pulled one, two, I got five. So um, this is kind of what I think everyone's wondering. How's he going to do um, against some of these bull rush opportunities against the big guys? And what are some of the things he's doing really well? Um, I think there's a lot of really exciting stuff to take away here that's going to show you guys how he's going to get his pass protection to that level, how he's going to win or if he loses, how he's going to lose slowly. And that's a term that's kind of funny. And I, I, I want to talk about it quickly for a second. So losing slowly isn't a bad thing. Um, we've seen it in a lot of undersized centers or undersized guys like Patrick McCary, for example, who was a more undersized offensive tackle last year, had a lot of slow losses where he's giving up ground. He's being worked backwards but he's not giving up leverage and no pressure activities happening from the defensive player. So, you know, it's a slow grind. He's, he's maintaining his leverage. He's refitting his hands and he's getting walked back a little bit, but it's not disrupting the quarterback and their reads and, um, you know, causing them to rush a throw or misplace a throw and whatnot. So I think it's still very positive. Um, so we kind of see that here right away. So I think he works uh, a double with Phillips to his left. So yeah, Phillips is the left guard here. Um, so let's go through and then I'll go back slow. So you're going to see, yeah, it's against Pierce. And then he ends up taking Pierce one-on-one. -on -one. And what I want to do is go back and show you guys his technique and how he uses his hip torque um, to, well, not just his hip torque, but his hands and how he builds his house um, to put himself in a power position as a pass protector. So right here, 
Phillips is kind of – is that Pierce? Yeah, it is Pierce. Um, and then Pierce is going to come off him to him. And so right there, you can see right away his hips are back. His He's kind of bent up where he's got that arc in his lower back, which is what you want because he's got good posture. Um, he's got all of his power in his upper body. He's using his lower body to anchor. And then as he loses that a little bit, you see right there how his right foot takes a big step back. But what does he do? Right here. Gets low, hip, torques his hips, plants his feet. And again, right there, you can kind of see him get back into that power position where he has good flexion in his ankles and his hips. Um, and he's able to get the ball out. So that's just a really good example of a guy like Michael Pierce, who is the type of guy that could give him problems where he's going to, you know, it. He, he's kind of getting walked back here, but it's a slow burn. You see right there, he gets his, look at that right hand of his back inside Michael Pierce's chest plate. Um, he's constantly, you can even see his feet take a stutter step. He's constantly working through to regain leverage, stay low, use quick feet, keep the guy in front of him, build his house. Um, so that's the, this is the perfect type of play um, that I think, highlights where he's going to have success as a pass protector. So I just want to show it again one more time again. Focus on his hips. Focus on how he torques, how he sets his feet. Constantly working. His legs are constantly churning throughout that rep, um, which is very exciting stuff because once you start to get dead feet, you're going to lose your ability to square up, build your house, and, and keep that guy in front of you. Um, this one we're going to look at uh it's that oh yeah that hook when he gets on washington so broderick washington's gonna come at him on a double i think it's with maybe with phillips again oh wait i got these plays out of order okay wait let's go back i wrote my notes wrong this is that beautiful pass to Rashad Bateman, though. I think all I was showing here was the double team he takes on because uh, – let me just go back. Yeah, he's working the double with Phillips. Um, what I wanted to show here is something that I got talked about a lot when he was compared to Jason Kelsey, and uh, people were a little bit worried about the size, and, and I mean, I'm one of them. So, um, But, you know, a really, really good draft analyst that's out there is Brandon Thorne. He's one of the best offensive line analysts that's kind of in our community. And he talked about what the Eagles used to do with Jason Kelsey and how much help they give him inside. And you can kind of see that start right away in the stadium practice. He's getting help from his guards quite often, um, which is not, not a knock. Like, people might see that as a knock. Like, oh, we had to help. Um, no, it's just, that's what you're going to do to unlock the elite run blocking ability that that guard or that that center can bring you. Um, plus you're always going to kind of double against the big heavies as well. And so you kind of see that here with Phillips, they're going to squeeze that double team. They kind of got three against two with Zeitler here too. And they kind of Phillips squeezes him over and they kind of got those three blocking out those two. Um, so that's just a note to say, um, and then look at that catch by Bateman. Ooh, baby. Um, so that's just a note to kind of say, that's going to kind of happen. And I don't necessarily see it as a knock. Um, again, Jason Kelsey is an all pro type guy. Um, so we'll see here again, see, same thing. He's, he's working that double team. They're kind of giving him some inside help. Um, but what I wanted to show on this one is the consequence of giving inside help to a center is it's going to put more stress on your tackles because you're, you're focusing that extra help. If you have, five on five six man protection on a four or five man pressure um you're gonna have to leave your tackles out on islands and that's what you kind of see here and so you know lamar's working up in the pocket which is fine but you're just you're gonna see those guys get stressed in their pass protection um when we get into this one i think he's got isaiah mac on him yeah so i want to show that underhook he gets oh let's get there sorry um so Max right here, and then Max going to cut into Linderbaum right there. You see Linderbaum also, this is really good processing. So if you guys look, this is where I need all 22 because I can't see. It looks like he's lined up as almost like a four eye. Like he's kind of just inside the knee of the offensive tackle here, the left tackle. And then he's going to cut. And you can see Linderbaum. See how he looks left right away? And he's going to pick that up as he crosses face right there. And he can't, again, you can see it if there was all 22, but he can't. He's got that left hand, and he's going to scoop that left hand right up into the armpit 
of, I believe it's Isaiah Mack. You can kind of see it right there. See how he's already worked his upper body that way? So what he did is he took that inside hand, he took his left hand, worked it up into his armpit, and then turned his body, and that's what's happening right here. So what you do there is you take away any leverage that they would have had. And this is one that I thought was really interesting because where I noticed Linderbaum had issues in college was when guys had a runway on them. So if, if someone was you know, coming across on a, on, a, on a stunt and they get a little bit of runway, that can be tough for Linderbaum to kind of get his hands placed if he's being outlanked by that player. But what he did here so well is he used his ability, get that inside hand up, leverage, get, get it under the armpit, and then, he, look, he's got vice grips on him. Like, he completely stood him up, took away all leverage he has. He's law. He's just standing there like this now. He's got, got the handcuffs on him, and the rep's kind of over. So really impressive stuff there. Um, and another touchdown, Bateman. Um, and then this last one I think we have. I told you guys this was going to be a quick one. I think he's got Travis Jones on this one, if I remember correctly. Yeah, that's Travis Jones. And so, again, it's kind of hard to see because of – the broadcast view, but um, Travis Jones is the exact kind of guy that you could see him having an issue with. Um, so I think it's always good to look at. And what I wanted to kind of show is you can see him absorbing the bull rush, but you can see how much he's constantly working to reset his feet, kind of like what we talked about earlier. So he gave up that little bit of runway and see, so Jones kind of got underneath him here. So you can see Jones is, uh, right elbow underneath Linderbaum's. And then, again, you can't see because Brent Urban rudely cuts right in front. But I'll go back and try and slow it a little bit. If you can focus on Linderbaum's arm, he's going to get right there. You can kind of see his arms coming down, and then he refits and gets back under Jones. So he kind of started on top of Jones' elbows. As he took a step back, he plants his left foot, and then he works his hands back under. And that's that refitting that you want to see from him. And then you can kind of see right there who's up in the air now. It's Travis Jones. He's kind of gotten high. And so that's the exciting stuff about what Tyler Linderbaum is able to do with his hands. Um, that brings us to the end. If you guys have any questions, drop them down. Um, and I'll kind of uh, I'll, I'll take a quick look through the chat. Um, but those are kind of my big uh, – that was actually a really good question here. Is hand and finger strength something guys work on? Um, it's a good question. I've, a lot of guys will work on grip strength. Um, some of that comes just from natural weightlifting. Um, but what we used to do specifically with my youth players is we got them those just those squeeze grips because I noticed these kids are young, right? Like I'm working with like 13, 14-year-olds. Um, but they would really struggle with squeezing that chest plate, um, and that's kind of where we're telling them to go and then as you get you know older obviously that's going to come along but grip strength is super important and there's multiple ways that guys will use to get that better so um i think it's one of the most important aspects and i think you see it so much in tyler linderbaum's game um which is super exciting uh don asks how much functional strength power do you think linderbaum can add now that he's in an nfl strength and conditioning program it's a good question um i'm no expert in uh strength and conditioning but he's already strong as hell. Like he set Iowa weightlifting records. He was a beat Tristan Wirfs. Was it a squat record or his power clean record? Um, I can't remember which one, but he broke Iowa records. He, he won. I, I talked about it in the film room I did on him. Uh, he, he, he broke, uh, it's fun. It was the Iowa state fair. There's this thing where they have to throw this big log like up over. It looks like a pole vault. Um, and he like set the state record doing that. So he's already so strong. Um, strength was never his issue. It was always just kind of natural size, but, uh, obviously being in an NFL weight room is only going to help. Um, but what I'm kind of seeing right away is his technical skills, um, and his mastery of those technical skills, I think are really what's going to be the difference between Tyler Linderbaum being a productive player, um, and not being a productive player. And I'm super encouraged right out the gate. Um, everything I'm seeing is the things I saw in his college film, which and he was a very good college football player. Um, so seeing him get, uh, you know, get to it right away um, is super exciting. And I think you're seeing that pro readiness, which is also exciting. We want to see rookies compete right away. We want to see rookies be able to take it over. 
Um, we know Makari is competing with him, but it doesn't even look to be a competition. Linderbaum's just taking that job and running with it. Um, yeah, good point. Uh, are we excited for the under center installments? Uh, yeah. No, I, I don't know if you guys noticed, but they ran from under center way more than I was expecting at the stadium practice, which is exciting because um, what they can do with that is put in those zone concepts that we talked about that Linderbaum is so good at and the types of play action, bootleg play actions. Um, think about Ryan Tannehill and them running zone with Derrick Henry. That opened up the nastiest bootlegs for Ryan Tannehill where he's empty because they're so focused on Derrick Henry. If the Ravens could get to a point where they're running under center and they're you know, able to actually run zone consistently where you're not using Lamar's legs or the option and the hesitation it causes to defensive linemen, um, think about what that does to that backside defensive end. So that defensive end is reading, reading Ryan Tannehill and him keeping the ball uh, and reading Lamar Jackson is night and day. And so I think that's really what's exciting about the ability to unlock those zone concepts and what that could do for the pass game, because you see so much right now when they're doing option concepts and uh, using the mesh point. So they're running it out of pistol and they're doing, you know, RPOs and that sort of thing. You'll see defensive linemen charge the mesh point because they're trying to force, you know, either Lamar to take off or they're trying to, you know, they, that's in their defensive strategy. They're going to run those scrape and peels and that, those sorts of concepts. And so they're constantly charging the mesh point, which means if it is just straight play action, Lamar's being, you know, targeted right away because they're just going to go right at them. But with zone, it's just a lot different. You know, under center zone, you can't really just chase down the quarterback because that takes away the entire integrity of that back cut. That backside defensive end has to sit down and kind of read to be there in case, you know, J.K. Dobbins happens to cut back um, and do a backside cut behind that zone block. So um, I think that's one way that they could add a wrinkle that's super easy to add. Um, that would go a long way and really help Lamar Jackson because if he's running bootleg play actions and guys can't really get on him right away, it just gives him more time. Uh, and we've seen how good Lamar can be when he doesn't have to worry about having defenders in his face. Um, so I think that's really exciting. And then just cleaning up some of the comments here, his technical skills make up for his lack of size, 100%. Um, it's how he did it in college. It's how he's going to do it in the NFL. It's how he did it at the stadium practice. Um, it's, it's clear as day. Um, you know, you're seeing his ability to kind of refit his hands, the way he's kind of doing it all the way through. He's getting in under armpits. He's winning in all the power points. Like he knows how to win and where to put his hands um, to, to out leverage his opponent. So he's not one of those pure brute strength guys. He knows how to win and he has a plan going into each rep, which is super exciting. Um, and then, yeah, Team Ramy makes a good point. Kettlebells do help too. Um, so, and Garnett says, thank you for your time. And everyone out there, thank you guys so much for joining. I said I wanted to keep it short. Um, I hope this helps. I hope you guys can kind of see some of the exciting stuff. Um, we got 31 in here right now. If you guys can do me a favor, look in the bottom left corner, hit that like button. It means a lot. If you guys are new here and you want to come back for more, hit subscribe. Um, and we'll catch you in the next one. I think I'm going to do Daniel Falele, look at some of his practices. So look out for that. And as always, be good to yourselves, be good to each other. Peace out.